Welcome back for another prize pick plays of the week. I got uh, my man Tony. Welcome back from California. It's been uh, like two weeks. I think we've done. When was the last time we did this? Dude, I don't even remember. It this, feels like so long. This guy is struggling to keep his eyes open right now. <laughs> so be weary of his uh, of his uh, squares here. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're going to be uh, we're back. We're giving you our uh, prize picks, uh, our squares. We've got some two squares, some three squares, maybe even a six square. I don't know. Shit could get crazy. It's been so long since we we've done this that last time we did it, Prize Picks wasn't even offering six square plays. That's right, and that's why we're gonna we're gonna get into it. We'll get into it. We'll let All you right. know. We'll let you know. Um, I'll start us off. I'm gonna give you my first uh, one of the week. We'll let you you know build it up. Get <laughs> get 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 yourself ready to Thanks, to man. do this show. All right, I got a two square. I'm going with. Donovan Peoples-Jones, more than three receptions. Look, Jacoby Brissett, this is his last week as a starter. He's a competitor. He's not going to want to go quietly. So he's going to go out there, and he's going to throw the ball. He's going to throw it a lot. He's going to throw it hard. He's going to throw it fast. And Donovan Peoples-Jones has dominated this line for the past seven weeks. Seven weeks with Brissett as his quarterback. He has absolutely crushed this line. He went like five, four, six. He's just all over it. Absolutely annihilating this line. Uh, worst case scenario is I think we push, which I don't even think we do because we're at, you know, it's three receptions. There's no hook here. Absolutely love this line. I have it in a ton of stuff. Uh, love that square. I've been crushing it, dude. Absolutely. I'm, I'm tailing this. I don't even give a fuck what, what the other ones are. The other one is, it's, it's I don't know if it's a trap. I don't know what the deal is, but Traylon Burks, more than 43 and a half receiving yards. He went seven for 111 last week in his return, uh, and he did that while only playing 50% of the snaps. So, if he can play, uh, you know, sixty percent of the snaps or seventy percent of the snaps, I should I should see him going over this forty three and a half. And uh, I'm a little weary. I'm a little. I'm gonna use that word a lot. I think I like it now. I'm a little weary of this just because it is it. You know, was that like his? Uh, I'm back, and then you know he's gonna go back to being quiet. Robert Woods. I don't know what's gonna happen there, but Traylon Burks. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm sticking like with it. it. It's a low line. It's a low line for a guy who who seems to be their their new alpha. It's exactly. He's either gonna take over that role or he's not. But he doesn't even really need to take over that role to hit 40 to. yards, 45. He doesn't, but he should because, I mean, the, you know, that offense runs for Derrick Henry, so. Yeah. All right, that's my two square. <laughs> Forgot it was my turn for a second. I got a two square for you. Let's go down to the Cincinnati Titans game, all right? There's two guys that I really like. Number one is Joe Burrow. I'm taking the more of Joe Burrow, 275 and a half passing yards. Joe Burrow's obviously been amazing this year. He's sixth in pro football focus passing grade. Fifth in adjusted completion rate, seventh in yards per attempt. So he's slinging the rock downfield. He's accurate with it. But since week five, the Tennessee Titans have also been 28th in passing yards per game, letting up a shit ton of yards. They're fourth in deep completion rate, first in deep passing yards allowed. So Joe Burrow, even with no Jamar Chase, should be able to sling the ball downfield. Get some, uh, rack up some yards. The, the Titans also let up a bunch of touchdowns to quarterbacks. So I was kind of contemplating between Joe Burrow fantasy points, Joe Burrow yardage, but the fantasy points is kind of high. I don't want to rely on touchdowns here, but the passing yards I feel really good about. We've seen Joe Burrow hit like 400 passing yards in the game. We know his yeah. ceiling skyrockets above yeah, this line. He's what you call a, a stud or a franchise quarterback. Big time stud muffin Joe Burrow. The other one that I paired this with. Is Traylon Burks. Didn't take his yardage, took his fantasy points more than eight and a half fantasy points. You touched on a lot of it. He, you know, he he should be the new alpha there. He just came in, coming off his breakout game. Burks has uh three red zone targets in his last four games. Seems like he could be used around in that area more. And that's kind of why I decided to go with the fantasy points over the yardage, because this total is not counting the fact that he's going to score a touchdown. And maybe he does. He doesn't even really need to. If he goes over his yardage prop, the one that you took, and his, uh, his receptions prop, he's going to go over eight and a half fancy points. It's a full PPR, people, all right? So he could go for his, like, kind of projected four catches, 45 yards, and hit this line. Or he could mess around and find the end zone, in which case that is an auto dub at this point. So Traylon Burks, I think, is a lock to have at least eight and, eight and a half fancy points. And, yeah, that's my two square in that Tennessee – Bengals game. Traylon Burks fantasy points. You're gonna need my yards, so most or, likely, or most likely touchdowns. Yeah, tough. but most likely you're gonna need my yards too. So I have to like that. All right, I got another two square. It's a two square with two running backs, two different sized men, <laughs> two weeks that these lines have not hit, and two players who are absolutely due. We're talking about Derrick Henry 
more than 95 and a half rushing yards. And we're talking about Christian McCaffrey, more than 55 and a half rushing yards. Both of these guys, both of these lines, they have not hit in the past two weeks. If there's ever been a more do duo, this this is these are the two guys. You got Derrick Henry, huge running back, big line, 95 and a half. Christian McCaffrey, smaller running back, smaller line, 55 and a half. Both do. Do duo. That's it. There's no real analysis for this other than that these guys are both do. And they, they're going to have to hit. That's it. They're either good running backs or they're not. And if they're good running backs, they're going to hit these lines. Because you're not. they're not going to go three games in a row not hitting their line. they so, got to bounce back. That's it. I like it. All right. I got another two square heading down to the Seattle-Vegas game. First guy up, I got Kenneth Walker to go over 77 and a half rushing yards. Obviously, he had a bit of a stinker against Tampa Bay, but there's no better bounce back spot than the Las Vegas Raiders. I mean, ever since he took over the job from Rashad Penny, 27th in yards after contact, third in breakaway rate, 19th in elusive rating. He's also kind of messing around and catching some passes here and there. Not that that counts towards this line, but he he's their bell cow. He is more bell cow than anybody in the league. And the Raiders, since week six, 29th in rushing yards per game. They're absolutely bleeding yards on the ground. Uh, I also think there's a chance that Seattle could just dominate this game, get up early, and just continue to run the rock. So 77 and a half yards, really like that from Kenneth Walker. He's a good player. Great ball player. And then on the other side, Foster Moreau. The new tight end, I guess he's not new, but like new starter ever since Darren Waller's been out. We're going to go more than eight fantasy points for Foster Moreau like since that. week seven. He's had a 15% target share, pretty average, but he's been used 30% of the time in the end zone, 80% route run rate. Uh, he's 15th in pro football focus receiving grade. So he's not bad. He's been a really solid replacement for Darren Waller. Seattle also 29th in DVOA, allowing the second highest yards per reception to tight ends, seventh most receiving touchdowns, and third most receiving yards per game. It's a great matchup for Foster Moreau in his new spot as the starting tight end for the Las Vegas Raiders. Again, this is similar to Traylon Burks. It's not accounting for him scoring a touchdown. Big guy in the big zone. Big usage. Love Foster Moreau this week. And that's my two square. Look, Prize Picks has uh, six square plays now, six square entries. You can have uh, up to 25x now. So I figured if they're offering it, I'm going to try it. So here's my little, uh, here's my attempt at my my six square. I'm going to run through it pretty quick for you. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, more than 210 and a half passing yards. This is his final hurrah. We know that. So he's going to go out with a bang. Pairing that with Donovan Peoples-Jones. Donovan Peoples-Jones, more than 41 and a half receiving yards, absolutely dominates this. 61, 99, 81, 71, 74, 50, 71. Those are his last, not, like he just absolutely crushes this every week. Uh, Travis Etienne, more than 68 and a half rushing yards. He did have a, a bad week last week, so I expect to bounce back from him. He's averaging uh, like 100,000 yards a game. So uh, Jeff Wilson, El Jefe, more than 13 and a half receiving yards. Uh, look, it's against Houston. This is probably the one that I'm actually worried about the most just Are because I think he might just run the ball a lot and maybe he doesn't get a chance to I don't know nah, I think that's your biggest lock you've got there we'll see I, I would have taken that and put it in one of my plays but I knew you already had it in there somewhere so I was letting you take the shine on that one but El Jefe with no Moster he's, he was crushing that line even with Moster yeah. like he, he's a decent pass catcher he should he should, he should crush that all right and then the last two we got touchdowns Nick Chubb and James Conner to score a touchdown interesting fact about Nick Chubb here for this season he didn't score a touchdown last week. He has not gone two games without a touchdown this season. So it's unless the time, Nick though. Chubb wants to make history in the wrong in direction. the wrong way, he's going to score a touchdown. And James Conner, uh, he scores a lot of touchdowns. And the Chargers give up a decent for. amount of rushing touchdowns to running backs. Although they don't give a lot a lot of fantasy points to running backs, which is interesting. So I could see like maybe a D hop, you know, falling down at the one yard line. James Conner, boop boop boop, you know. Yeah, this screams James Conner, three touchdowns for 10 yards. Yeah, Cordy P had two touchdowns against them, and um, fuck, who else? I'm not going to remember off the top of my head. There was another There was another player, though, that had two touchdowns against them this year. Oh, well. It's That's gone. It. It's, it's lost a, in the abyss. It's gone. Yeah, I saw it. Photographic memory is failing me right now. Damn. Never happens like that. I know. All right. That was a good uh, six-square play. It's going to hit. Yeah. It's going to bang. 
be interesting to see how that unfolds. Are you so, taking a, a crack at it? I don't think so. No? Nah, it just feels like that's, I could just divide that up into three different plays. Like, well, okay, so run through the payouts real quick. Well, if you I, hit I, all six, that's 25X. Uh, 50 to win, so $50 wins $1,250. That's 25X? That's, yeah, it's six out of six, correct. Five out of six, I'll win 100, just 2X. Just 2X for just hitting two. five out of six? Yeah. Yeah, I'm out. And then uh, four out of six, you you lose thirty bucks. Uh, I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> no, nah, I'm not taking a crack at that. I'll stick with my two squares. Tony two square all the way. Speaking about a two square, I got another one. Same game. 49ers, New Orleans Saints. First guy I like, Jimmy G. Or as the ladies been calling him of lately, Himmy G. It's been a top twelve fantasy quarterback in the last four or six weeks. That's no why we're going call, what? No one's calling him that. Himmy G. Everyone's calling him no, Himmy G. No one's calling him that. He's been called Himmy G for at least a month now. No. All right. He's playing like a QB1 in fantasy. That's why I'm going more than 16 and a half fantasy points for him, E.G. Uh, he's coming off a great game, four touchdowns. Look, he, he tears up the Cardinals. That is what it is. But he's also fourth in yards per attempt. He's playing that like point guard position really well for the 49ers now that they got McCaffrey. He's been distributing the ball to him, to Debo, to Ayuk, Kittle, even guys like Yushek. I mean, everyone's getting involved. This is like one of the best offenses in the NFL right now. The Saints, they don't get a whole lot of pressure on quarterbacks. They've done well fantasy-wise against quarterbacks, but only 29th in pressure rate. Jimmy G's going to have a lot of time to get the ball into the hands of his playmakers. Saints, 19th against fantasy quarterbacks. Not a bad matchup for Jimmy G, who's been hot. Stay hot, Himmy G, pairing him up with maybe the only man in the NFL who's more hot than Jimmy G is Jawan Johnson. He scores a touchdown every single week. We're taking the more of eight fantasy points. Eight? Eight. From Jawan Johnson. That's a touchdown. That's a touchdown. That's and all we need. A couple yards. Yeah, here and there. Look, Jawan Johnson, 13.3 target share is what it is. Niners, normally a pretty good defense. Jawan Johnson plays nearly half of his snaps out of the slot. Runs a lot of routes there. So he'll be matched up with Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Ward's been god-awful against anybody he's been guarding in the slot. So I think Jawan Johnson, eight fantasy points. More than that is a lock. Yeah, that's his bread and butter. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's he's scoring an unlimited amount of touchdowns like right 24 now. 24 yards and a touchdown? There we go. It's easy. Yeah, that's that's a classic um, Jawan Johnson line, classic Jawan Johnson game incoming. All right, that was a classic episode uh, featuring uh, Tony No Dimes and myself. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the uh, thumbs up button. Also, if you're using prize picks and it's your first time, make sure you use promo code BDGE and you will get a 100% deposit match up to $100. <sighs> Made it through without throwing up. It was close. It was real close. throwing up, I was ran out of breath. That was tough. But that's why I'm professional, and that's why you guys should follow uh, my picks. No, don't follow my picks. Follow my picks. I feel good. I feel fucking great about these. Tony feels great about his picks, but not in person in real life. Um, Alrighty. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next week. Alrighty.